Welcome to the uh, movie library. First things first, uh, we made it. Uh, we uh, we got through the uh, the vinegar syndrome sale. It w was insane. It, it was crazy. There was like some ups and downs, some peaks and valleys. Now it's time to tax everyone. Yeah, there's uh, there's another sale. So. If you uh, just, hey there, Chris. Uh, if you just uh, got through with the, the, the excitement and stress of the first of your vinegar syndrome sale, especially if it's your first one, hey, Charles, <clears throat> prepare for the stress and ups and downs and wild craziness of the selling out of Severin stuff. So I'm going to guess everybody here is familiar with Severin. I'm going to open up my uh, YouTube here now so I can share comments as we go through. So what I did is I brought my complete Severin collection down here with me. Uh, we're going to go through them all. I'm going to show you some, not just some of, th of this stuff. I don't have my L. Adamson set yet, so we'll be unboxing that as soon as it has this little vacation in Los Angeles where it's at at the present time and uh, comes to me with, with hopefully some, some nice stories uh, and, uh, and we'll unbox that too. <coughs> <clears throat> but I'm going to show you some of the pins. You're going to see some pixel elixir stuff to give you an idea of kind of like what that's like. Uh, if you haven't dove into the enamel pin world yet, it's uh, it's pretty addictive. I will uh, be honest with you right there from 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 the from the start. And I'll show you a couple of the bonus things that they do. I don't have my Severn shirt on today. It's in the wash. Uh, I have an, all the colors of the dark shirt, the Sergio Martino one with the glorious, hey there Dave, Edward Fenich on there as well yo death bomb welcome man we're talking severin because we just got over one sale it's time to uh get uh to get on. actually i was wearing two gloves but you just can see both of them in the picture uh to get on to the to another show so who here is going to be like going into the uh, going into the severin collection who's, who's going to be going for that sale um i for sure can't but I will for sure be along the ride with you guys. Hopefully with the seven one, I'm gonna try. They have announced today their sale. I think it's uh, June 25th. I think June 25th, 26th. Hey there, Raiders. <coughs> you ready? All right, so I'm gonna show you some stuff. Some of it's gonna be out of print, some of it's not gonna be out of print. Um, but before you even get into any of the titles, I got DVDs, I got Blu-rays, I got blue case Blu-rays and black case Blu-rays. I got some box sets to show you. I got some 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 Severin swag, that type of stuff, uh, to show you as well. Um, but let's start out first. Does Severin have any good westerns? I don't. If they do, I don't know about them. Now they might, but I don't really think of Severin as a western company. Now, Chris, you're gonna like Severin for a couple of reasons because we're gonna talk about some slasher stuff here and some Jallo as well. And I know that's in your wheelhouse, so uh, you're you're gonna get uh, some uh, if you don't already have them. So temptations along the way and I will be doing an updated video I'll probably be gonna be doing a video of my study as well we're gonna go through the whole seven library we're gonna look at the every one of the, the titles uh, and that's that's gonna be uh, that that's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be one it's gonna be a big one Pignini Horb wax mask all cars of, of Jello and vice of strange vice of mrs. Ward great titles there waiting on my L me too Alan and I got first class shipping, and so out of Severin's hands, he gave me first class shipping and all that. But it's it's going around there. Hey, Joe, it's uh it's traveling around. It's out it's out of there. Uh, they did their best. <laughs> now it's just up to the postal service to get it to me. So I think before we even mention any of the uh, any of them, any of the other ones here. Well, I think we have like one of those in here. I don't think Brian's here yet, so we're gonna have to kind of take care of it myself. Which I won't do for now. <clears throat> Please try again. I gotta load my menu again so I can't see any of your comments.
Looks like we might have a troll. <laughs> Well, somebody came into the wrong, came to the wrong room. There's no Ryan. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's true. Actually, some people have been getting Alan getting the replacement discs on the exact same day that they're actually getting their L absence sets. <clears throat> so that's good. That's that's kind of an interesting thing as well, which I find kind of kind of cool and I, I'm gonna show you some uh, box sets and stuff there hey there Jer <laughs> we can once the sales there <clears throat> hey welcome <laughs> Ryan so you I'll let you take do all the modding stuff because I'm uh, we're gonna get in the Severin because the sales coming up and I'm here to be the devil on your shoulder. <coughs> hey there, Amy. Welcome. So first off, I'm going to show you the pins first. That way we can get into the movies and uh, we'll go into that. So Severin does like a series of pins, kind of Hall of Fame pins. Uh, their pins are uh, are usually done by like uh, by Attic Flood or Pixel Elixir. That tends to be the... Uh, It tends to be two of the uh, two of the big ones. We have another mod here too, do we? Oh, JR, yeah, we do. Okay, right on. <clears throat> so this is like a kind of a, this is a look at the at the pins. Anyways, you get an idea. So this is a Sergio Martino one, which came out during their uh, their Black Friday one. Of course, that's Edwidge Fenich from All the Colors of the Dark. I gotta be careful showing you the next pin. Hey, Mussing. So here we go. There's Edwidge Fenich pin. Do I wear it? Obviously. See, I would. <coughs> I need to get a good jacket for it. Uh, so if I had like a decent like pin jacket. Hey, Amir, welcome. Welcome from Canada. <coughs> then I definitely would because I do love the pins and I do want to get more of the Severn pins. I find that, uh, that the Attic Flood and Pixel Elixir pins are really, really good. Uh, also give you kind of like a neat little type of one that they that they put out how do you get this again again how do they do this this is a, a keychain hey there shadow welcome man from uh from severin and this is from uh, the wax mask by the way which you guys just mentioned excellent looking keychain i i utterly adore this thing So if you've never seen it, 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 it's fantastic. You got your L out? I know, just Shadow, I'm jealous. <coughs> Mine's wake, making its way through Los Angeles. I think it's going to become a Hollywood star before it gets here. But one of the neatest things that I ever got from a Severin bundle, Severin does bundles with t-shirts and pins and all kinds of neat little things in it, uh, was uh, this here. So they did they, all the colors of yellow, all the colors of the dark set, where those pins came from. And along with that came these here, uh, leather gloves, these well, full leather gloves, and here we can see the Severin, and the all the colors of Jello, written on this, there, and of course it's the uh, the driving glove style, that you know the killers would use in the Jello films. So, really, really cool to uh, to get that. So if I ever want to make a Jello, then I'm a, I'm set like the Severin killer. OJ gloves. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go through the DVDs first, then we'll go into the Blu-rays. We got like uh, we got some box sets. Uh, anyone gonna take care of that? <laughs> so uh, Brian <laughs> or Jr. <clears throat> hey there, Mary. It's time to uh, to do that thing that we rarely have to do here, but we got to do with this one. <laughs> so just a uh, unfor well, fortunately and unfortunately, what's happened is recently I've had more viewers come 
on the uh, on the channel. Uh, and let's. What I'll do is I'll put the person in timeout, and if they come back again, then uh, you can just uh, block. We'll go with that. <coughs> All right, so let's go. <clears throat> hit the like button. I know one person's not hit the like button right now, but uh, <laughs> hit the like button, please, because uh, I do appreciate that, and it does help the channel a lot. All right, so I do have a bunch of Severance stuff here. I got some InterVision stuff as well. We'll go through that. <clears throat> That's like me. I, I, I don't think I can do this one, but it, I figure, like, there's going to be people in there that are going to be doing it. So uh, I'm going to go through the whole... Uh, aspect of it now so this is one they put it along oh God, this is a while back I think this is a blue right now <clears throat> to print stuff in the Severn site I did hear about that actually is that stuff still there I know a lot of it sold out uh, pretty quickly do you know what they put out like on the now Severn like a lot of like a lot of smaller companies are they're kind of sh shut down uh well you know from going to conventions and all that stuff right now so a lot of the stuff that he put out, put away for conventions that are, are slowly making it onto the website as he find other things see any carols uh, not that i can think of actually <clears throat> so first of the dvds is psychomania which did have a blu-ray release i'm pretty sure from arrow video uh, which, you know, it's George Sanders release. I think it's the last movie George Sanders ever made, actually. So we'll go through the DVDs quickly because you guys aren't too interested in the DVD stuff. If there's anything that does interest you, though, <clears throat> let me know because we're going to get into the what's the, which is the cooler cut type of stuff. <clears throat> but Psychomania is like a really cool release. The Stuntman was one of the ones that I got free during one of the Severn Black Friday sales. Severn did this thing where if you bought so much uh, you would get like one free title and if you bought like another one uh, you got like two free titles and like the maximum you could get were three free dvds so one of the three free dvds was the stuntman which actually is a really good movie with a uh, peter tool right yep peter tool and still and steve reels back in barbara hershey this was a two disc special edition <clears throat> coming along with that one was the movie shopping which is kind of a Sadie Frost and I didn't know this one until actually I'd seen this. I actually cool movie, uh, Paul Anderson, but I hadn't uh, hadn't picked it up, so it was free. So awesome. And next up is Inglorious Bastards, the original with Bo Svensson and of course uh, Fred Williamson. This is only the one disc edition. I do need to grab the two disc edition or the Blu-ray down the road. If there's a Blu-ray, is there a Blu-ray Inglorious Bastards? I I don't remember. <clears throat> and. Uh, Last one, the free one, was Zulu Don. So again, Peter O'Toole. Again. Any similarity to Tarantino's? There's a passing similarity. Tarantino's films are more, like the Inglorious Bastards, I think is way more similar to like, uh, like in some ways, Fernando de Leo, like some Fernando de Leo stuff. <clears throat> if you've seen like Inglorious Bastards and you've seen Fernando de Leo's work, then you're going to know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, there's a... There's definitely like kind of kind of like the the heart of it's there. Okay, next three we got our Intervision titles. Now before I go on Intervision, uh, what Intervision is for those who are, who haven't clicked the Severin or aren't aware, Intervision is a sub label Severin. <clears throat> and uh, what they do is they do shot on video film. So basically, they're all they're all, they're all going to be on DVD. They're all going to be in white cases, and. Uh, they're all going to be like uh, movies that were shot on DVD. Well, you know, shot on video, basically. Shot on video movies. So that there'll be DVD and not Blu-ray. Because there's no need, <clears throat> like really, there's no need for a shot on video movie unless they found some amazing elements to go to Blu-ray. Uh, DVD is kind of, its, uh, kind of its, its place when it comes to uh, when it comes to that. Let's be honest with that. First up is a, uh, I think this is Bruno Mattai. Actually, it is Bruno Mattai. And this is The Jail, The Woman's Hell. <clears throat> Notice how they kind of cleverly like uh, put the title and the snake there so that there's actually no nudity on that. 
What's my favorite seven title? I'm actually going to get to that. <clears throat> so you will get an answer to that question. Next up is things, which I think everybody should have in their collection because this is probably legitimately the worst movie ever made, and it's entertaining as hell. Uh, and I do mean when I say the worst movie, I mean this in the in the, in a great uh, in a great way. So we'll uh, definitely an excellent little title. Chris, <clears throat> when you say you have all the slashers, do you have, uh, like, for a minute, Severin, do you have this one? Yes, they should, 13th Wolf Man. Everybody needs things in their collection. It's super low budget. It's like, it's one of those movies that, that if you like, if you watch bad movies and you like bad movies, you don't, you cannot say, hey, I've seen the bad, I've seen The Room, I've seen those, I've seen Trolls, I, you know, I've got the bad movie watchers. Uh, like, uh, like, you know, stamp of approval. No, you don't. When you've sat through things, then, then you get the bad movie watchers. It's like stamp of approval. That's when you can say, yeah. It's like, you know, you, you've, you've done it all. You've, you've, you've seen everything at that point. <clears throat> hey there, Mark. So this is Murderless. Uh, Chris, this is a, a shot on video slasher film. It actually has two films on it. It has a, a the second one I've seen, Project Nightmare. Which is a uh, is a bit of a weird one, apparently. Oh, there's a bad movie festival. You got we'll go, you things got to be on it. I love the cover art to Murder Lust. Look at that. Probably you know don't remember this one. Else. I got Queen of Blood too here somewhere. I do, do I have the the one that uh, was put out by Chris Sloan? Is that the one you're talking about? Because the, the other Queen of Blood is cool, like like that. <clears throat> but if you, if you. But let's get into the Blu-rays. The real cool stuff. The stuff you unlock. So we got everything here from like uh, documentaries to newer shot and video stuff. Chris Alexander, that's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> yeah, here it is right here. Queen of Blood. <laughs> hey there, Will. This is from Chris Alexander, who uh, worked with, was it Rue Morgue? Or, I'm pretty sure it's Rue Morgue. Fangoria. Okay, well, got it mixed up worked with Fangoria and I think he works with Delirium magazine right now, the, the one that Full Moon does. So this was a film that he shot, kind of like it was a, it was a homage to Jean Roland. Oh no, this is my Severin collection because Mark, there's a Severin sale coming up in uh, late June. <laughs> so I didn't find this one as bad as 13 Wolfman did. Uh, is it a great film? Probably like, no, we're not going to say this is a great one, but I get what he was going for. Like, <clears throat> he was going for like uh, like the whole Jean Roland vampire thing. Like Chris Alexander, you know, good try. Not exactly <clears throat> Jean Roland st stuff, but uh, still. So we now know what's in those uh, little mini slip covers, by the way, from Vinegar Syndrome. But I won't tell you in case you don't want to know until I get yours. What do we know? <clears throat> And it's neat. You actually kind of put some. I did, <clears throat> and I actually put a tweet out on it. I ordered the two films that I said I was going to order. <clears throat> I'm not going to spoil it. <clears throat> so uh, again, thank the, I got to thank the call and Mary and everybody for for helping out with that uh, because I was able to get those two films that I that I wanted really badly, which uh, was you know in the cold of the night, and uh, and party line. I'm not spoiling it. I, <laughs> I know you guys got it coming. One guy's picked it up. Watch out on Facebook. There's a Facebook uh, a post where the guy does show what it is. So uh, don't go onto the uh, Vinegar Center Collectors page on Facebook if you don't want to know what it is. All right. So next up, we have uh, Kung Fu Trailers of Fury. Now, there are two of these. This is the first of two. There were two volumes. There was uh, like more Kung Fu or like Kung Fu more tra Trailers of Fury. I do like this one a lot. Actually, it has a commentary by Rick Mars, of course, who wrote the book, and uh, is like a, a kung fu expert, kung fu movie expert. Uh, there's also a featurette on here as well, uh, and it's a really, really fun one. <clears throat> uh, this is a, this is trailers of a bunch of of a bunch of films, like every everything from Bruce Lee to Jackie Chan to Sammo Hung, uh, just some amazing trailers and some really kind of cool stuff as well. So if you like if you like kung fu films. If you're into the Bruce, if you're excited about the whole Bruce Lee Criterion set that's coming up, 
or you, uh, you're really into like the martial arts films, then you owe it to yourself to get this one. This is a really good trailer one and with a great commentary and some great little featurettes on here as well. Oh, Charles, this is a cool one if you like martial arts. <clears throat> you should, AME. I can't believe you don't have it. <clears throat> There's like two of them. The first one's the best. Hey, Ramon. Hello, hello. Uh, but uh, the first one's definitely, the, like, I like them both. I don't have the second one yet. First one's the best one, though. Have I seen Touch of Zen years ago? Yeah. <laughs> if it's the one I'm thinking about. That one I like. That's Sexploitation. Uh, it is a movie on sexploitation, pretty much the early years, the loops, the nudie cuties, that era, pre-adult films. Uh, <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's done by Frank Henlotter with a, a lot, of, lot of stuff by David F. Friedman in there as well. It is brilliantly excellent. This thing is amazing. Uh, so it runs at around 136 minutes long, so over two hours long. Trust me, it, it goes by, it just clicks by really fast. Well, there are a ton of features on it, over three and a half hours of sexploitation shorts from Something Weird uh, archives. And if you know Something Weird, uh, they do some amazing, incredible, insane stuff. <clears throat> they were the ones putting up the sexploitation and the, and the L. Adamson and the and Andy Milligan and all that stuff long before uh, the other companies came to the mix, they were, uh, they were doing it. There's also an audio, audio commentary with Frank Cannellotter and something weird's Lisa Petrucci and uh, great commentary because Frank Hanlotter commentaries are amazing. It is extremely extensive. And I've watched this one a few times. It's a really good one. So next up is a Canadian one, a Canucksploitation. I don't think there's anything I hate special features on. I'm like, trying to think on something. Like I'm a special features, like I'm a special features fanatic. <clears throat> Let me think about that. that. I'll answer that in another. I don't have any of the trailer trash ones. I really want them. Uh, the trailer trash stuff I want. There's like those umbrella uh, ones that came out that I want. The ones that like are done by decade. Kathy's Curse. Now this was a movie that for years you would see it on a bunch of like. Uh, it's a great question by the way. You see it on like on a bunch of like like compilation you'd see like some like mill creek would put it out and we have this really scratchy horrible looking copy you try to watch it you try to get through it but this this actually is yeah 30 what man i totally agree this actually is an excellent film and uh they literally like you it was like seeing it through new eyes uh they did an amazing restoration with two cuts of the film on here, by the way, the director's cut and the alternate u.s release cut of the film uh there are some interviews on here uh, yeah, there's a commentary on the U.S. cut of the film. Uh, there's an introduction, uh, just uh, basically to a screening uh, of a screening of Kathy's Curse when it was like done. Incredibly well done film. Severin killed it with this release, and they just it was just incredible. And I need a drink. Next up is one where the backstory is, uh, is just as interesting as the film itself, and in, a, in an unfortunate true crime type of way. So this is Blackenstein. Talk to the girl who played Kathy to do. Yeah, actually, yeah. So Blackenstein was one of those uh, kind of cool black exploitation films. Uh, of course, it's literally what you think it is, Blackenstein. But I guess the most interesting, one of the most interesting parts about this is, is sadly that I think it was the producer that made this film was murdered. So that's actually talked about on here. Uh, there's like an interview on the, with, I think with his sister. Got to remember. But uh, interesting title. Not my favorite black exploitation film. It's a fun little film. But the story behind the scenes is actually fascinating. Would make a great full length documentary in and of itself. <clears throat> Warlock, we're... We're tempting with Severin now. I had planned to initially do a complete Vinegar Syndrome overview of my entire collection, but I'm waiting. I think I'm going to wait till I get my sales stuff and we're going to do like a big one. Why is my stuff not updating? My for some reason, my chat's not updating, guys, so I do apologize. i got to close this up and open up again. 
because it stopped at at the Kathy's Curse comment from uh, Thirteenth Wolfman. I'm having some issues with my uh, my YouTube today, actually. I'm glad somebody's dead, <laughs> Warlock, because you know what? Uh, I'm a I'm not feeling too happy with Unobstructed right now. It it was it was uh it was sent out on the fifth. Today is uh is is the uh it's the twenty seventh. So I'm just gonna put that there. We have to. I think what upsets me like kind of most is that one of the things that was sent out was it was a set. And it was a it's it's a it's 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 fairly pricey set. It's a hard one. It's not one of the easiest sets for me to find. Um, and he sent it through letter mail. Rather that was so there was no like shipping. So there's no tracking number. That's the thing. I I emailed them. Uh, Unobstructed view. Yeah. So for like a regular like deep Blu-ray, uh, I I kind of get that. But uh. If you think for like something like a set, like a caught up set or something like that, even if it's a slim set, it's still a set that's, that's harder to find and can be a bit more expensive. Uh, get a track number for something like that. Because if it gets lost, I don't know exactly what the what the next step is. Uh, like I got stuff coming from, obviously, Death Bomb's here. I got stuff come, come from the States long after that and still got to come. Um, so that was uh yeah i just had to give up on the manson family because i didn't think it was going to come in uh so i uh i planned to reorder it because he canceled it uh but i uh i said no i so just send out what's what what you got so they they sent out the uh that one on the fifth and i think about a week later they sent out like beast of the magic sword so i don't expect beast of the magic sword to be here yet but uh, I'm a little bit nervous that I'm going to get Beast of Magic Sword. I'm not going to get the one that came uh, that they sent up first. And I've got like I've gotten like tons of stuff after. I have like I ordered through through Screen Archives for that like Twilight Time sale. Uh, that's reached Canada. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully, I'll I'll, I'll get stuff. It's unfortunate because an unobstructed view is kind of like the Diabolik DVD of uh, of Canada, and I want to have a good experience and I want to be able to order again because they have sales on a regular basis and stuff like that. But right now, I just don't feel comfortable. But hopefully, I'll be coming back in a day or so and saying like uh, <clears throat> that you know the stuff came in. But right now, it's just uh, yeah, for luck. I know you got I know you got a friend. That uh, that works there, but that's that that just kind of. It makes me. F <sighs> All right. Which I will not partake of because I still don't have stuff from their sale <laughs> back when they did their thirty percent off sale. Uh, <clears throat> when I get my stuff ba back, I'll. I'll I'll pimp out the <laughs> their website, and we'll probably talk heaps and loads of praise on them. But right now, it's just been a bit of a, and they're really good at getting back to me. Uh, but it's uh, like I'll give them credit; they're good at getting back to me. The the no tracking number thing for the for the set though, yeah. Uh, I went on to a forum site. You guys know which one it is, uh, and I asked. I said so. Do you normally get tracking numbers with your stuff? And uh, they were like, you know, yeah, we always get tracking numbers. So that kind of like peeved me too. So that's my unobstructed view situation so far. Hopefully it'll get better. But as of this point, like... I'm not a, I'm not exactly a huge fan of uh, <clears throat> of that stuff. Anyway, I should get back to to the positive stuff.
See, there's the thing though. If you got a tracking number, uh, you at least can go back on something like that. When there's no tracking number, what do you do? Like, <clears throat> you can you, you can fight on it with a tracking number. Uh, with no tracking number, it's like this was the killer part of this regman is this company is in Canada, so uh, <clears throat> I, I I definitely sh you know this is where you get your stuff normally, and and I don't have anything bad like really sad. It's just that this situation has been oh no see I work downstairs right by my mail. Uh, so, uh, literally if, uh, if somebody was, was to come up on, on my bridge to, to, to go into my mailbox, that I would, uh, they wouldn't be going down walking. So <laughs> just, just so you know, uh, that's, uh, cause I've, I've, I lived in an area once where, where that happened to me, where I had some stuff. That was uh, that was like uh, where I got some stuff taken. So I, I'm, I'm at the point right now where I, I spent a lot of time getting all this stuff, and uh, <clears throat> yeah. <I'm laughs> all right, Future Shock 2008. Well, okay, <clears throat> excellent documentary actually. Uh, <clears throat> the story 2008 was it was a it's a comic book in uh, in. Britain, a lot of the big names came from it, uh, especially like the guys from, uh, well, you know, that would go on to do Vertigo uh, type of stuff. Yeah, well, when I was up in Ontario, I had some stuff. Like, it wasn't I had some patches, it was like I was doing a uh, kind of like a moving sale. And some people came in around that time, like, swiped some stuff. I had the complete series of Highlander, the Anchor Bay editions. And I was like the series. And I was like a really big uh, big fan of the show and stuff like that. And they got those and a few other like titles that I have not been able to get back. Because, and I don't want to get the regular Highlander edition. Um, so I'm, I'm nice on here, but I'm not nice if somebody takes my stuff. So, <laughs> so that's a... Uh, that's the series. But this is an excellent documentary. You haven't checked out. Arrow Video put it in a, a version of this as well. I actually like the cover to this one a lot better than the cover to the Arrow Video one. It just has, you know, it's just so comic book. And it's so many of the characters from 2008, including Judge Dredd, all those guys on there. Uh, there are some, a lot of special features on there, a lot of documentary, uh, like behind the scenes interviews and just some great stuff from people like, you know, from uh, Mark M Millar, Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore, Andy Milligan. Uh, Alan Grant, John Wagner, Grant Morrison, Neil Gaiman, uh, David Gibbons, uh, and uh, Karen Bridger, of course, the the girl that started Vertigo uh, Comics in DC before the recently canceled Vertigo Comics for DC Black, which was the most stupid idea I've heard in comics in a long time. All right. Okay, next up is the Barbara Steele... Uh, Queen of Horror triple feature. We got Nightmare Castle on here. There is Castle of Blood and there's Terror Creatures from the Grave. So it is three Barbara Steele films. So excellent, excellent release. I love Barbara Steele. She just has this haunting look about her. There she is there in like rare blonde hair. Which is, I'm trying to remember, it's probably wig. I'm trying to, uh, <clears throat> but I love, she of course worked a lot with Mara Bava. Uh, she was an English actress. She worked a lot in uh, in, in Italy. That's, that's where she really got famous at. If you saw the movie Shivers, she's the uh, kind of the sexy, uh, promiscuous neighbor in the movie Shivers. She has like the, the bathtub sequence. Um, there's an older one. But there's like a bunch of stuff on here. Oh, I'm going to get that one actually. She was in, yeah, she was in Fellini's Eight and a Half. See, I think of it or like her cheesier stuff, like shivers and stuff like that. And you think of it her classy stuff. Silent Scream, I do have. That's actually a good movie. Who put that out again? Was it uh, Scorpion, right? Scorpion release can put it Silent Scream. I know I got it over there. <clears throat> Next up is one that I'm that I was always stoked about. I was so excited when I got this movie. I got this movie and an Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece collection at the same time. And my better half was so was so peeved because I got more excited about this movie than I did with the Alfred Hitchcock Matchpiece Collection, which is insane, really. But, 
but she was just what kind of weird taste I got. Uh, but this is House on Straw Hill with Udo Kair and Linda Hayden. Uh, of course, Fiona Richmond, as you can see right there, is in this one as well. Linda Hayden hated this movie, but I liked it. We got to see a lot of Linda Hayden in this film, by the way. <clears throat> but of course, like the, it was a limited, like 3,000 discs that had this here been the saddest videos documentary in here. And I do love <clears throat> the... Uh, Ben's status videos. I love any documentaries <clears throat> that are done on the uh, Video Nasties era. So you're over in the UK that I'd go through the whole Video Nasty thing. I find that fascinating, by the way. Speaking of fascinating documentaries, don't worry, there's lots of horror and exploitation and lots of cheesy good stuff that you guys are going to be able to look into soon. <clears throat> Lost Souls. If you don't have it, why don't you have it? It's a great documentary. There's only one edition of this that you should look at. There are going to be three editions on site. But is the House of Pain edition? <clears throat> that's the one you look at. This, that's the one you get. So this, of course, is the journey of Richard Stanley to make All in the Dark Merle. Obviously, it didn't happen, and it messed him up so much that he didn't make a movie for years. It is a strange documentary, and it is so well done. It is done by the guy that did the Al Amson documentary, which came out recently in the Al Amson set. It is a three disc set and it's got a bunch of features on there. Aside from having an extremely fascinating documentary with lots of like bonus features on there and interviews with the people behind the scenes, the the second disc has the H.G. Wells files, which has a uh, a 1921 kind of was a recently was a supposedly lost version, uh, German version of the Allen and Dr. Moreau. And there's a H.G. Wells on the film feature with expert Sylvia Hardy and Richard Stanley talking about H.G. Wells as well. Nice. <clears throat> Did I bring that over? Because if I didn't bring that over, I'm going to go get that. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, we have the bonus CD ROM on here as well, which is an audiobook recording of H.G. Wells, Dahl and Dr. Moreau, um, completely read by Richard Stanley, who is a huge fan of it. Obviously, he made the. Uh, he did the. Uh, he wanted to do the movie, and that didn't happen. Criter oh, don't tell me I got to do a Criterion video, too. That's going <laughs> to. I forgot about that actually. I completely forgot the sale. Whole month of June usually. Criterion usually do their. I'm not sure if for this sale. I know that their November one is the whole month. So it probably is the whole month too, yeah. Is that the Barnes and Noble one? It is a really cool documentary dungeon. If you haven't checked it out, really, it is fascinating. I'm sure you can probably find it on Amazon Prime or something like that, but this three disc edition has a ton of features, including extra films, uh, an audiobook, which is actually pretty cool. So next up is The Devil's Honey, which is one of Lucio Fulci's best films, actually. It is not so much a gory horror film. You're not going to get that with it. Uh, you're going to get some erotica, that's for sure. Um, and basically, it's an excellent little Fulci film. Uh, I would have loved to have seen him done more in this line because uh, with, a, you know, with a decent uh, budget, this is probably one of the last Fulci films that has like a really decent budget to it as well. So that's always something to... Uh, so if you've not checked out Devil's Honey, why have you not checked out The Devil's Honey? It's Lucio Fulci. It's him, in my opinion, at, at kind of a at, at a peak. It's you know it's not it's not like the uh, like the ones the other ones that you're. It's not like his The Beyond. It's not The Beyond. It's not a cemetery, you know, House Beyond Cemetery or anything like that. It's a very different Fulci film, but it's a very good Fulci film too. And the next film is definitely a classic, which, a very actually, but it's more than that. It's like, it's got Brett Halsey in it. Uh, basically, it's about this uh, this girl, and she's in love with this like guy who's a young saxophonist. Um, there's an accident, and the doctor that, uh, that that's working on him, he's having uh, issues with his wife. Uh, she's like, she's not nice. Uh, we're go we'll, we'll put it that way, she's not nice. So anyway, uh, he dies. The guy, the saxophonist dies. Spoiler alert. Like it's not a big spoiler. It's at the beginning of the film. So he dies on the operating table, and she blames the uh, the doctor for uh, for his death. So she kidnaps the doctor, and um, kind of tortures him in a, in an erotic sense. And it's a film about <clears throat> <clears throat> there's like last delusion. Uh, coming to terms uh, with not just the loss of somebody, but like your perception 
of what a relationship was uh, as opposed to what it actually is. Like she idolizes the, uh, she idolizes this guy. And so in her mind, when we first start to see her flashbacks of, uh, of him, uh, we see very idolized flashbacks. It starts, I think, on June the 25th. I'll, I'll have to make sure, but I know it's late June. I haven't watched Chris Merrill yet. I'm going to watch that tonight, actually. I wasn't filming yesterday. That's why I never made a video yesterday. But if you guys want to want a classy movie, then obviously you want to get The Sinful Dwarf. I'm very surprised that Criterion hasn't put out a, their own version of The Sinful Dwarf yet. Because, you know, definitely a film that just reeks of, like, of class. <laughs> Sinful Dwarf is like a... Definitely, this is an X-rated film, guys. Um, there's two versions of it. There's like a strong international version, which we'll call it was unrated. There's a second version, the an alternate U.S. release called The Abducted Bride. And there's a third, uh, which is a very triple X film on it called The Big Balloon. And uh, I actually really like The Big Balloon. I'm waiting for him to... <clears throat> Debbie does Dallas. See, Debbie does Dallas is something Vinegar Syndrome up eventually. I've I got to say, they, th it's got to be them that's going to put that out. If anybody puts it out. All right. We're getting into the black cases. I don't have any of those yet. <laughs> of course, they're, yeah, they're like... <laughs> but I'll, I'll get them down the road. So what I'm doing, I'm going, Ken, I'm going through my complete uh, Severn collection. I don't have the Al Amson set, so I won't be showing you that tonight. Uh, but as soon as I get it, we do a, that needs a special unboxing anyway. I uh, has everybody seen, and if you haven't seen it, I'm going to recommend this. Uh, Michael Keane um, is a YouTuber, K E N E, when I mentioned him on here before. Uh, he, he likes a lot of the same stuff that I like. Uh, so uh, he did a video, and he's like a filmmaker too. So he did a video on, hey, the way, <clears throat> on, uh, on, on Berserk, on Berserker, called, uh, what's it, Jetem Berserker. And it's done like in like in a, a French cinema style, <clears throat> and I'm uh, it, it 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 is hilarious. So I do recommend you check it out. And if you do check it out and you respond to them, let them know that I sent you. All right, let's get it. It is good, isn't it? Uh, I followed him on Twitter. He followed me back to it, which is actually kind of cool. So we do, as you can tell, we have similar tastes. Eight movies in already. Wow, that's you're going through them fast. So this is Shocking Dark. What is Shocking Dark? Well, you ever see the movie Aliens? And did you see the movie Terminator? Everything about putting them in a blender and making a film, what, but much lower budgeted. So yeah, that's Shocking Dark. And is it worth seeing? Oh, it's so worth seeing. Um, <laughs> it has Greta Greta in it, uh, who was in, of course, uh, she was in Demons. Oh, there she is right there. She's the first person that, you know, gets killed. She doesn't get, she gets her face scratched on the mask and demons as she goes to the washroom she turns into the demon creature so she's the first kind of big demon that we see in the uh in the movie demons oh i haven't seen that one yet should have I, mean, I just reviewed it oh man i gotta check that out i gotta put on my jacket guys because it's getting chillier so what's neat is when she's interviewed she talks about like kind of in a way and maybe i heard it wrong but she talks about it like like she's a star of Shocking Dark. So, <laughs> spoiler alert, uh, big surprise to me when she's not. <laughs> uh, so, because uh, I hadn't seen it in ages. And I said, okay, I guess Greta Greta does let last read it. Oh, nice, Chris. Keep me up, keep me abreast. Let me, keep, let me know about that. I want to know these things. Okay, next up is Zombie 3. This is a limited edition, 3,000 copies. And it has, of course, the soundtrack. I love that Severin does that. <laughs> I had no idea. So you can see the soundtrack right here. There's the Blu-ray for the film. Uh, some interesting features on here. Of course, this one was direct directed by Lucio Fulci. And by say, when I say directed by Lucio Fulci, I mean Lucio Fulci 
kind of directed part of this film, but most of it was probably directed by uh, Bruno Mattai and, uh, you know, Claudio Fragasso, who helped out because he did the story screenplay for this film as well. Fragasso is the name that you, it is the name you're thinking of. He is the director of Trolls 2, Troll 2, which is, of course, what he's probably most infamous for. But uh, for Italian aficionados, like you're a fan of Italian cinema, uh, like the schlocky cinema that I like, have I met any Giallo directors? Unfortunately, uh, Brian, I have not yet. Heath is awesome. Uh, one, I got to say, like, I uh, recently did a video with Heath. Like, it's not up yet. It's going to knock me up for a bit. Uh, he's had so much to do. Uh, but uh, but I had I had a thoroughly enjoyed my time just hanging with Heath on, uh, on Skype. And uh, legit, so when you watch Sure at Midnight and you see that, like, kind of, like, the excitedness, uh, which I guess I kind of have, too, uh, that's legit. Like that. That's real. That is really him. He's he's a gypsy. Like actually, and he's a nice guy. He gets super excited. Uh, definitely check out his stuff. If you haven't checked out his channel, check out his channel. I got to check the video tonight, by the way. Then I got to be jealous because he's got his L. Adams and said, "I'm still waiting on mine." All right. So Zombie Four After Death. Uh, so this one is again a. Uh, this one is done by Claudio Fragasso. Like if nothing else, these covers are amazing. Um, Sir Midnight's story, uh, which actually he talks about, is he got this one, this one, and the third one, at Walmart, but somebody had scammed him. It's not out yet. Like it's gonna be a while before. Like we f we filmed the video, but uh, it's gonna like he's got to edit it, and uh, he's got a lot of other videos done there. And I said, well, it, our talk wasn't time sensitive, like on like something that was going on. So I said, you know, take your time on it, and. Uh, you know, like he'll let me know when, once it gets out. Then I'll let you guys know as well. But you should be watching his videos anyway, so you'll probably know already. <clears throat> but he, he had gotten like three and four at Walmart. And he was so excited about it. He got them for a good price. He got home and it, rather than like actually having the seven like discs on the inside, right? It had uh it had like the old like uh, discs from uh, from Shriek Show. And uh, so Severin like. Like just reached out to him, uh, he didn't contact them. Seven reached out to the Heath, and they sent him Zombie Three and Four. Like didn't cost him anything. They sent it to him. That's so. That's the kind of company company Severin is. When you think about it. that's that's the kind of people that they are. You remember the video, hey? It still blows them away. Italian Italian horror Italian. Uh, so, Cinematarian westerns. It's just there's just uh, an amazing amount of like uh, of, of you know, even when it's cheesy. Look, I like Richard Franklin. Patrick is a great film, but I love Patrick Still Lives, which is a ten knockoff sequel to Patrick. Uh, where basically, um, what happens is Patrick, you know, the guy's walking down the road. He gets hit with a Coke can or something like that, I think. Goes into a coma. And his powers, uh, unlike in the original Patrick, where he just used telekinesis to like, kind of like kill a couple of people and move stuff around. No, in Patrick Still Lives, you know, orgy time is had. Sex is had. <laughs> so that's... That was, that was cool. <laughs> All right. If you don't have this one and you're getting something from the sale, I do recommend that this is one of them. Uh, this does get called a cinema approval. This is uh, this is one that's going to get like a, a strong recommendation from Call of Cinema, and that is Absurd. Absurd is a great film. It uh, stars uh, George Eastman, who uh, of course was in Anthropopicus, and uh, it has uh, Edmund P Perdue, right? In her, Edmund Perdue? Yeah, I got to get it right. Perdum or Edmund Perdue uh, in here as well. He was of course in like Doing Up to Christmas, uh, and he plays kind of like the Donald Pleasance type character in this one. Yeah, George Eastman was like a huge guy. He was like he was super tall. Um, now, what's neat about this is like he's also like the you know he's 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 the screenwriter as well. Uh, George Eastman actually was a writer too. He wrote he wrote like a lot of scripts. Uh, was an extremely intelligent guy. Like uh, he's actually interviewed on here as well. So uh, really nice guy. 
there was a slipcover set. I did not know that was a thing. So the they have like the soundtrack in there as well. It actually has a pretty good soundtrack. I'm sure it does. Uh, Eastman is definitely what you'd call like the gentle giant type of guy. Baba Yaga, exactly. Next up was one that that surprised heck out of me when I got it. And uh, because it was a gift. And uh, it was a super gift. And that is Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. Now this one is out of print. Uh, I love this these uh, films. Uh, this one here, of course, has the... Uh, the soundtrack as well, which it's like, I would say it's a comedy. It's like a there's like a, a, a maybe a erotic zombies. We go with erotic zombies. Almost like a, almost like a, give it like a John Roland type of feel is what they want to go with. A lot of people are inspired by John Roland, man. Okay, now we're getting to some slipcover stuff. You ready for some slipcover stuff? HBO Max, that's in the U.S. So, uh, not good for me, but uh, it's, it's cool though. So this, th these were the Solid and Miranda, Jess Franco films that came out in slipcovers, and I utterly adore these. This is Vampire Lesbos. I'm gonna, I'm putting it out there. I'm saying it right now. I'm gonna say it. This. I like better than Chris Lee's Count Dracula, also done by Jess Franco. I know. There's 11 copies on the Severance site now. Grab it, man. We do have HBO here, but I don't know if we got the HBO Max or not, though. And if you look, notice there is no, you know, there's no Severance logo. There's no title on it. It's just pure artwork. And I think that's bloody brilliant. It is geniusly done. And I utterly adore that. Uh, this one here has a, a second, uh, like Spanish language, uh, like bootleg of the, uh, of it as well. Uh, this is a great film. Uh, if you haven't seen this one, Brian, I really recommend it. Because Sultan Miranda has this kind of it factor. Unfortunately, she died way too young, uh, but uh, she has this kind of this this era, this aura about her. Yeah, like if she would have, she would have been a big star, like much like Lena Romay, Romay was would become his muse, right? And of course, the, his life partner. Uh, but uh, so the so the Miranda was definitely his early muse. Uh, you can see it. You can tell by the way that he that he films her. She died young. I think she did Miranda died in, in a car accident. Actually, she died young. I remember she died really young. So this was the other one they put so the Miranda just Franco and she killed Nextly, which is an excellent film, by the way. Uh, 1970, yeah. So a year before I was born. Um, and again, let's see the cover in this one here as well. You can see, look at the artwork, man. It's just like pure, like just untouched artwork. No. And I do recommend this. This one has a CD soundtrack in it. Uh, this is early on when he started doing the CD stuff. Uh, and CD soundtrack for uh, Vampire Lesbos, for She Killed Nexusy, and The Devil Came From Akasava. So, uh, Another member of the 27 Club. Holy crap. Back when I was young, I remember I when I first heard about it, that's when I figured, that's when I figured it would be up for me, like 27. I said, that's it. I'll be part of the 27 Club. Uh, but definitely like an excellent film. Uh, and if you like Jess Franco at all, like this is some of the better Jess Franco stuff. Uh, like he made a lot of films and it's like some obviously there's different ones of varying quality just Franco is an amazing director it's just he loved to make uh he, he loved to make he loved to make films he loved cinema so he just can make stuff hey cinema tech welcome dude pretty good i'm not i'm off work now so that's that's always a plus right next up is one that i think everybody's gotten if you don't have it why don't you have it it's skinner uh skinner was an excellent release by severin and it's probably oh no just franco passed away he, uh, Lena Romay passed away one year and he passed away the next year. He was, uh, him and Lena Romay were, of course, they lived together for, for like a long period of time. And they, uh, they were, they were a couple, um, and they were very, I think she was his spark, she was his flame. And like, you know, kind of a, 
I'm hopeless romantic. And uh, that, like, once she was gone, you know, you, you kind of knew that he was going to go afterwards, unfortunately. There's a lot of people that died. The, look, did the 27 thing when it comes to that. It's pretty eerie. Well, it might take about a week or so before the packages all get, get, like, really start. A lot of them get shipped out. But uh, especially with, with as big a sale as it is. But I'm sure it'll get shipped out, shipped out like soon enough. But Skinner has Ted Raimi, Tracy Lords, uh, uh, Ricky Lake is in this one as well. This is a great film. Uh, it is a really well done film. But not only that, it's a great like set altogether. It probably is some of the best produced like special features that that uh, Severin has ever done. And I do recommend that you check it out and pick it up. I don't think that the slipcover edition is available anymore. If it is, get on that because it's a sexy slipcover. So we got Ted Raimi here. You got Tracy Lords here. Uh, excellent one with some great interviews. Uh, it doesn't like a giant large cast, but it's actually a really good film, and it's really different. It's really unique. It was uh, done by the. Uh... Did you really? Oh, nice. This is a really nice slipcover shadow. So you're. It's the back of it right there. So this one is definitely a bit of a treat. Uh... <laughs> I, me too, chair. Uh, but the features here, like the director, I have a Nagy, of course, famous for uh, Heidi Fleiss. You know, he's the boyfriend of Heidi Fleiss. Um, he talked to Ted Raimi. Uh, he talked to the screenwriter, Paul Hart Wilden. And talked to the uh, editor of the film, Jeremy uh, Caston. Some, just some really, really good stuff. He retards Batman. <laughs> So definitely one to check out, guys. So we're going into the Severin stuff. I'll actually look on the site afterwards. We'll just see what's there and see if any of the stuff that I'm recommending to you guys is actually now available on the site because some stuff that went out of print did not get any copies of Blood Island back, did they? Just wonder. Well, their, their slipcovers are more like, I guess, like regular slipcovers. Um, arrows, they're different arrows are done from the UK, so arrows got kind of these O cards, um, which you know is like slip cover, but you usually have kind of like a O part. But uh, I'll show you, like, this is the, the change, like, for instance, like, no for me, no slip cover is, is as great as a vinegar cinnamon slip cover, they are the king of the slip covers. Uh, so if slip covers are your thing, then vinegar cinnamon, that you know, and you got some slip covers going, awesome, you're gonna get good stuff. So it's, you know, it's, they got some emboss and glossiness on this changing. I actually really like this changing slipcover. What I do like about them is that they use these here black cases. And uh, I love the black cases. Of course, next one is the Changeling. One of the best ghost stories ever made, hands down. Love this movie. But how can the ghost not be scared of George C. Scott? Because, you know, it's George C. Scott. I'll have your syndrome. Hey, no, that's a good... So we got the wax mask. Again, I love this one. It teared me up. Not the film, but a feature on it afterwards. Uh, but it is a really cool little film. Some people didn't like it or complained about it. Some people on a certain site actually complained about the quality of the film which I don't get at all because the quality of film is excellent. Uh, and I should know, I've watched it like three or four times. There's some great features on here, some really great features, uh, including an interview with, uh, with Dara Gentle talking about Lucio Fulci. And it, uh, it might make you cry a bit. This was directed by Sergio Stavaletti, who of course was kind of the, uh, he's the uh, Tom Savini of Italy. Oh, and these are a slip cover. Oh man, you gotta go for slip covers. Y you didn't get blood games? You didn't get blood games, man. Because blood games. It's such a cool movie. All right, I gotta cover this one because this one has the nude tie in it. So this is Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals. Good question. Actually, I'll mention. I'll ask me again in a few minutes, and I'll mention that. Yep, my sisters and never sleep alone. Never sleep alone. What's never sleep alone? I'm trying to remember which one never sleep alone is. I know Nightmare sisters. Well, 
Wait a minute, the documentary, the 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 uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street documentary, great documentary. Favorite and least favorite cannibal film. That I can answer right away. This is my favorite cannibal film. There's not much cannibalness in it, so it's my favorite cannibal film. I don't like cannibal films. Uh, any cannibal any cannibal film that has animal cruelty in it, that'd be my least favorite. Great one, by the way. Uh, this here has the uh, this one has the CD soundtrack. Does I think, or just have a bonus, or just just a, a slip. I feel like it has something. So we got is this the soundtrack? Yep, it's got the original motion picture soundtrack. Can I show it? No, no, I can't because there's nudity on it. Lots of nudity in the manual. I can show you this because this air is covered. Here you go. I, I I didn't mind Deathline. Deathline is a is a uh, is a British film. With, if you're talking about what I'm talking about, and, uh, Kim Holocaust the Nun cruelty version is, isn't bad, but it's it's still it's not one of my favorites. Like I'll be honest with you, there's uh there's way better films out there, but I understand the uh, significance of it. Jack the Ripper, excellent film. It's a little kind of like twisty thing on the end. The way Severin films are going, I don't think you're going to get Neverending Story 3. I think Severin kids' films is almost like it's kind of tongue-in-cheek with the, some of the kids' films that they do. One of the... What's that I got? Uh, one of, I got a documentary on her somewhere. Talk to her. Uh, but uh, yeah, they because like they put out like uh, when the wind blows, like as a Severance kid release. So their their kids release are really odd kids releases. I feel like from Blue Underground. What's my? I don't like it actually. I'm not a fan of From of From Hell, the uh, the Use Brothers film. Uh, I mean, there was certain I liked certain aspects of it. Uh, it, it was well shot. And uh, I like the uh, the period, like piece, the clothes, stuff like that. But uh, I was a bigger fan of the book than of the uh, of the movie. But uh, yeah, much bigger fan of the book, like the graphic novel. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite slips in the. Just look at it. It's got that pulpy look to it. It looks like uh, like something you pick up for like you know, like in off of your the uh, rack, the book rack back in like the seventies uh, or eighties. Has that kind of like cool schlocky popness to it, like a Doc Savage novel. There's there's me showing my age. The sale is around I think around June twenty fourth to twenty fifth. So that's the thing. Movies get lost, and and doesn't that be an old movie get lost too? A book a bus station book rack, perfect. Killer crocodile. And Killer Crocodile too. I love these films. I know eighty films put them out in like a in like a slip case or a box or something like that. But I, I just really like this. Just look at this. Doesn't that look like there's some awesome like action? There's like Jaws like action in this film. There's not, but they're still fun films. <laughs> Don't, this 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 is not in Killer Crocodile, in nowhere. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like that beach scene from Jaws. It's not in the movie, but it's a great cover. Is this one on dual layer disc? I think they're all on dual list. Most of these are. I'm going to say yes, but I don't know for sure. All right, ready for some box set stuff? I've only got like four, seven box sets. So we're, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. First one is the one that you've been here since the beginning of the video. You're going to know about because uh, I was wearing the gloves. So this, first I'll show the movie, but I got to cover it because of nudity. 
Uh, Cause Severin is one of the companies like Vinegar Syndrome has puts out some X-rated stuff, but you'll notice that there's never any nudity on the front covers of their releases. Um, oh, the alligator films are excellent. John Sales, didn't he write the first one of Alligator? Or am I getting it wrong? I thought it was John Sales. So this is All the Colors of the Dark, which of course is Sergio Martino. It's a very, very different jello, but I actually really, really enjoy it. And on the other side of it is like the movie Alligator. It's Italian, so it's like it's Italian version of it. It's all is all the colors of jello. Do I think the new jello set will go to print? I don't know, actually. That's one, it's hard to tell. I mean, I'm a Nuberto Lenzi fan. I like that st style stuff. But uh, I'm surprised that it didn't get as much uh, play as I would have expected. So this is the, uh, all the colors. I would, oh, are there American jellos? Uh, I'm sure there's like American like versions of jellos. If you're not made in Italy or Spain, I, I, I'm probably not going to consider you jello, to be honest with you. I, if you're German and you're, and you're I'm going to call you a creme. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say so. Dress to Kill. Yeah, Brian De Palma is about as close as you're going to get to an American jello. Thank you, Jason. That's a really good example. Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Hands down. Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward uh, is, uh, is a fantastic film. Uh, this is a great film, too. But, like Jason's 100% correct, Dress to Kill is, is definitely an American Jell. That, that, is a, that is the quintessential American Jell. In a way, I mean, like, Shriek Show is like kind of an earlier, what could be an earlier iteration, sort of. Because you, you get, like, lesser quality copies usually on, on Shriek Show. Sleaziest Jello I've ever seen. Oh, Sister Versla. Brilliantly fun Jello, but yeah, it's definitely the sleaziest I've ever seen. Andrew Bianchi. So, this is all the colors of the dark. So, basically, this girl's not having. Uh, strip for nude for your colors is definitely up there, up there too. No, that's not Andrew Bianchi. Uh, but Sister Versla, man. I don't consider. I know a lot of people consider New York Ripper Jello. I don't. I mean, it's it's partial, but it, it's like. It's like there's a couple films that kind of like skirt between Jello and uh, and Slasher. So I guess New York Ripper is, is a Jello, but almost in the Slasher sense of the terms. It just really, it kind of like, it kind of just pushes it there. What's the funniest Jello I've ever seen? Probably should be for your killer. Uh, yeah, and, uh, that was good, because that was a good one. Uh, All Cars of the Dark, it, it has a brilliant scene in it. And it's been talked about many times that anybody that sees this film uh, always gets talks about this one scene where basically she she meets like her her next door neighbor, and she's not she's like her her life's not going the best she's she's feeling kind of down things are going wrong. I know you do Ramon and I and you know I'm on the fence with that one, but most would and uh, I would too to like a certain extent, but I go back and forth. And so her, basically her, uh, her neighbor basically says, you know, I know things are kind of like, are, are kind of rougher now. Why don't we go to a black mass? So, and she's like, yeah, we should definitely go to a black mass. I don't have any of the seven, my first seven kids side of Warlock is going to be the one that comes in the LLMs and stuff. So like that's the thing that happens in this film, and, and it's done like straight faced. It's like there's no, it's like it's not like it's not completely done, and they really do go to a black mass after that. It's like, hey, oh man, things have been sucking lately. What can I do? Go to a black mass. You're right. That's exactly what I need to do. All the colors of the dark. It's a strange one. Oh, I'm so jealous. Home before with the all the colors of Jello is a fantastic little documentary. Please have watched a few Jellos when you see this one, because like the other one, like the Tenebrae one, 
uh, that was put up by Synapse. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of spoilers. This has some great stuff in it too. This is a three disc set. Uh, it, aside from having that, there's a, this too is a, is a second trailer compilation with, uh, with Krimi films. There's actually a, an interview with, uh, with Marcus Stegleger who talks about uh, the Krimi cinema. Uh, Krimi is uh, kind of like German, like a precursor to Jalo, German films. And disc three is a CD which has some excellent uh, like Jalo tracks on here as well. Uh, one of the great things about the first one, first disc aside from the documentary, is there is a four hours called Jalothon. Decimals, I have seen Decimals on Merge, but it's been a long time. And it's got uh, audio commentary with Cat Ellinger, and I just adore Cat Ellinger's audio commentaries. So there we go. There's that one. Now the next one, one of you guys just picked up. And it's got nudity, so you got to be careful with it. Bloody hell, why do they put so much nudity in these covers? And this is the Mondo Fro Frodo Mondo Bizarro. So this is the, the box set. Uh, and of course, it's got Echo and, for and Forbidden on it. This was one that was done in conjunction with Something Weird Video because Something Weird Video does amazing stuff like this. So first up is Echo and Forbidden, an incredible orgy of sights and sounds. I really adore these. I like mono films. Mono films, like you got to be the type of person uh, to like uh, to get into like a mono film because they're they're cheesy and they're you got me in the right mood or maybe a few drinks that type of thing. But I actually I actually liked it. And of course there is Mondo Frodo and Mondo Bizarro. The scenes in this film are real too real for the immature so there we go with that one but if you know like mono films and you like and you like that style of filmmaking then yeah you're probably going to want to want to pick up this release no i want the james mansfield oh, thank uh, dennis i want the jane mansfield one I, I can't afford right now but it's one that i that i do want to get down the road it's we got it to print twice like the, like the double set of it but eventually Goals, hashtag goals. Now this one's out of print, but they released all of them except for one on, uh, because what that's what they did with their box sets, is they released all of them except for one, right? So this one is the Amicus collection, and it has Asylum, and now the screaming starts, the beast must die, and of course the Vault of, of Amicus, which is a, a bonus disc. So we'll quickly look at these here. So this is Asylum. This guy in Asylum will later go on to play Jesus and Jesus and others. Oh, really? Uh, this is a cool one. I love Amicus, actually. This is an anthology film. This is ironically the, although Amicus is mostly known, uh, I do think they'll end up doing the Anne Milligan set down the road. I'm not sure if that's going to be the, what, what's coming up during the sale or the Black Emmanuel. I, I'm leaning towards Black Emmanuel being the set. And there's like a ton of features on this one. And like uh, this was the only one in the set that had like a, uh, a, uh, a double co slip cover. And this is the other side of it. A Franco set would be interesting. I would love to see a good Franco set. You have to break. He's done so many movies that you have to like break it up. Just Franco. What do you mean? You didn't mean. You didn't mean James Franco. <laughs> um, and now the screaming starts. Of course, has uh, Stephanie Beecham and uh, Ian Ogilvy in this one. A good film, probably like most notably known for that creepy like eyeless scene within uh, within the film. Next up is The Beast Must Die. This one's coming up from Indicator with a new kind of cool remastered release. I'm not sure how they found it, but they did. Uh, people say that this is like VHS like quality. Those people are wrong. Uh, it's definitely like DVD quality. It's not, I wouldn't say it's like super Blu-ray, but actually it's a decent quality copy of 
the beast must die. There's some extra, some cool features on here as well, including an auto commentary with Troy Holworth and, a, and an archival commentary with the director as well. Dream, keep dreaming for the Russ Meyer one, unless the, his family like just put, kill, stops the stranglehold. And this is the Vault of Amicus. Uh, there is like a, a ton, a ton of like uh, trailers on here and TV spots. There's three-hour audio interview with uh, with Milton Sabatsky, and uh, then there's like uh, another hour of like uh, audio notes from Max J. Rosenberg. Just some amazing stuff, incredible stuff done. Uh, when they initially put this out, they put this out with a uh, with a uh, a slip with a with a book as well, which I, and I think it was a uh, uh, done with the Diabolic magazine because I think they were the ones that did the did it. Okay, last but not least. <clears throat> well, not last, really, because I do have the two video nasties ones, which I'll go over and get in a second. Right here. The Hemisphere Horror said, this is one I recommend to everybody. If this one came back in, I do recommend you pick this up. Uh, this is an excellent little box set. It came with a, a little kind of like a mini poster with it as well. And it's got like six films here and there. The Blood Drinkers, which is a really fun film. Curse the Vampires, Brain of Blood. Yeah, five films, actually. Oh, I lied. And two other films on uh, are bonus films that aren't going to be sold outside of the set, which is The Black Cat and The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism, which has a Christopher Lee in it. So kind of, you want to get that. Y'all have some really cool features and audio commentaries and stuff on them. This is The Blood Drinkers, which I was really, really, really impressed with. It's all what you're into, man. Uh, this is Curse of the Vampire. Just look at these. These are amazing looking. Blood Drunk is actually really surprisingly good. Uh, <clears throat> there's some cheesy scenes in it, but but they work. Did you what? Did you hear from a certain forum site? Because if you did, don't go by that site. Because uh, <clears throat> these actually look really good. And w people have to learn to temper their expectations of what they think is going to come from DVD to Blu-ray, especially when it comes to, uh, to certain films. Let's be serious. Um, certain films were made with, with film stock and, and, and done like the way that they were done. Uh, and uh, certain films are going to look as good as they can look. I'm sure that when I watch the L. Adamson set, there's going to be films there that aren't going to, definitely aren't going to look perfect or pristine because Al Adamson made films very much on the cheap. And uh, you, you expect that, you know, that's like you get an Andy Milligan set or uh, you get like some of the other, some of the other stuff. You, you don't expect them to be like, you know, there's going to be, but that's will at the same time be closer to actually what the film should look like. But I, I would definitely go with the, with the Blu-ray set a hundred percent. It, it, it's, it's excellent. They did a great job. Of it, and they did one called Blood Island Collection too, which unfortunately sold out before I had the chance to get it. That was one that I was actually really interested in too. Uh, we actually ordered it on Amazon, but they canceled it on us because Amazon oversold their stock, even though we we, we pre-ordered it. Oh, I, d I doubt they hung a real cat in that one. I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I'll look it up because uh, there's like a site for like so if there's animal cruelty in the film it'll let you know heads gives you a heads up but uh let's check their let's check Severin's site let's get let's do it see what what's in stock or see if any of this stuff is still in stock the other one I got to show you by the way Can I just do it? Shop and all? Shop. Come on, shop all. Shop Blu ray. Your plans? I, do, I haven't really thought about it yet on Amazon set. I probably like like disc by disc. So, the, of course, the Lindsay set is coming in uh, in June. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. There's The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. I, I do recommend that one. That is a really, really good jello. Probably one of the top jellos. Of uh, of all time, 
Horns of Spider Runs. Satan Slave, I haven't seen the remake. Uh, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the original, so definitely, uh, you know, definitely a cool little title. Um, when the Wind Blows, if you, if you can handle it. Oh, wow, they got the Astrologer's Open Pleasure bundle back in. I'm a big Just Franco fan, and that's like two. It's got Cries of Pleasure, and uh, it's got the Astrologer on there. So there's, I haven't seen those in ages, so I really can't say go for those. Uh, I, I legit can't. Revenge of the Living Dead Girls is in stock. So if anybody, I do own Bear Ground, but I do I own it from uh, 88 Films. Yeah, but it's a really cool film. I do recommend it. If you like really insane, crazy, fun films, then definitely go for it. Revenge of the Living Death, Dead, Dead Girls is back in stock. So yeah, I definitely recommend that one. The Mondo uh, Boladero Jane Mansfield box set is, is sold out, but you can buy the, uh, the releases on their own. So the limited edition of Gwendolyn is back. Uh, Pagnini Horror is there. I don't have Pagnini Horror yet. It's one that I really want. Where from the Girls Dormed here is another great one. Uh, probably my most wanted release want releases uh, from them I w is the uh, is the Night Killer Robo Wars Beast and Heat uh, bundle. Now they don't have me as a bundle, but you can buy them separately. See, Night Killer is one that I, I think it would be great for my channel, like to really like to review on my channel. Robo Wars, again, another one. It's a meat. It obviously you guys know me. And uh, Beast and Heat. Now, uh, but I want it for the documentary too. You met just Franco. That kind of touched my heart. I'm not gonna lie to you there. It really actually did. Death warmed up is a bit crazy, but I, I you know, it's, it's if you want to see the guy from Hercules, uh, you know, the TV series. Like I won't be able to get any from this site right here, from this sale, but I, I will guide you guys through the sale as best as I can, and you guys will help with films that you've got that I don't have yet, like that one right there. Just check to see if there's any other ones. Horror Party Beach is there. Uh, the zombie releases are there. Hopefully a lot of these will be cheaper uh, once the uh, the Lord Gemster bundles are all sold out. I'm surprised. Uh, I do recommend Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, though. That's an earlier release. Uh, if you can get the slipcover edition, it's kind of sexy. You get slipcover edition. And uh, I don't have Vaughn's in a woman's prison, but that's actually a pretty good one, too. That's kind of an Emmanuel film. And Threads is uh, Threads is depressing, but it's definitely kind of worth watching. Beyond the Darkness, again, I think that's a cool release. If you don't own Drive Massacre, I really like Drive Massacre. And AME, there's two volumes of that Kung Fu one, so there's two of those to get. Axe and Kidnap Code is one that I really want to get as well. Um, Burial Ground, if you don't own that. It, Andrea Bianchi, he's, he's insane. His movies are insane. He's the guy that did Strip Nude for Your Killer. Um, yeah, just... Trust me, it's weird. There's a guy in it that's supposed to be a little kid, but it's, it's not played by a little kid. It's played by, you just know, it's the person that, like, uh, I guess a shorter person. Um, I don't know the right terminology, uh, so I'm, I'll say that. And uh, it's, it's weird. It's so weird. Turkey Shoot, again, another great release from, uh, from them. Oh. The Vampire Lesbos one is out of stock, guys, but she killed an ecstasy is there. I, and I do strongly recommend checking out that. Like in this there with the, with the limb edition Blu-ray set, too. Uh, so, yeah, if you saw my slipcover there first, she killed an ecstasy. Uh, that's usually considered the best of the two films. I liked uh, Vampire Lesbos. I liked them both, but uh, Selda Miranda is a solid uh, addition to your collection. And they have the Hot Nights of Linda Hard Banana Edition. I'm not going to go in any farther to describing what that is, except for uh, find out for yourself. And they got the Screwball Blu-rays back in. So there we go. A whole lot of Severin.
Absurd and Skin are excellent titles uh, to uh, to pick up. Absurd because I just I think that's an insanely great film and it's super fun. But uh, when it, when it comes to uh, but uh, Skinner just not only is it a fun little film, but the features are really really interesting. They're not long. They're like they're this short, like short like interview featurettes, but uh, they come at it from from different ways. Before I go, which I'm gonna have to do in a second, but uh, I'll show you two other several. So we're gonna go over here. So I gotta gotta do this. Hopefully. We don't lose the camera. All right. Severin also put out. <clears throat> so none of the stuff now. The, oh, thank you, Dennis. So none of the stuff that's available right now is going to be. Oh, see him, Ramon. Come back to next time. We'll make. I'm thinking of doing the vinegar syndrome one. We'll 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 see. Is going to be available during the sale so if you want to get that stuff now is the time to get it also these these video nasties documentaries oh marvel fan thanks for coming in i'm actually going out fairly soon so you stayed for most of the video so thank you so much uh video nasties documentaries are really good uh, aside from like two excellent documentaries there's like they have the trailers from from the all the video nasties on, on both of these and they have like introductions to each of the films which is almost like another separate documentary and so on what's the second one well the, the first one video nasties the defend of god gets into into like the into video nasties but the second one i guess is even better like this this is great this is a fantastic documentary this goes even deeper and at first you think well i got everything i need to know about the video nasties uh, you know, there's no way this can be anything but like more of a cash grab. But the second volume is just as good, if not better, than uh, than the first one. So if you like the first one, you're gonna love the second one. Video nasties. Uh, well, basically in in England, uh, what they did was the uh, they were outlawed. There were certain films that are on the list. Mary Whitehouse, exactly. Good old Mary Whitehouse. Um, had had a bunch of films that you you could get arrested if you uh, if you actually had them in your in your shop. So uh, you, you'd have police officers come into uh, into video stores and, and raid them and take away uh, and take away films. A lot of films were banned in the UK, and a lot of them were banned uh, for like a long period of time. Um, there was like a la label called Vipco. Well, if you got the Spookies Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, release then there's a documentary on that on Vipco Entertainment and Vipco put out a lot of the video nasty stuff in the UK which kind of made them infamous uh, for uh, for quite a while but I if you don't know the story of the video nasties if it's something you're you're wondering about these are usually fairly inexpensive to pick up and, and they're really really good they are all three disc sets by the way so so let's just see right there so just to give you a kind of an idea, like movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Deep Red, uh, Mark of the Devil, Zombie Hawks Extra, move Extra for instance, was a, uh, oh, it was, they were banned. So there you go. We'll do a video coming up sometime soon on Video Nasties. I've been, I've been meaning to like, Get into the Vionastis. Maybe we do a series of videos on Vionastis. Blood and Satan's Claw. Yeah. That one's sort out. That's Severin had that one there. Unfortunately, that's sort out. That's a really sexy looking one. So, my name is Aaron. This. Hey there, Aaron. Right? You're coming to right, right at the end. Hey there, Hedge. You're coming to right at the end. Check it out, though. Because, oh, by the way, guys, Severin right now on their website has out of print titles that aren't gonna be available during the sale that were out of print and are back in print now. So you might wanna check it out before they're all gone. I am Aaron, this is the movie library. You are the cult of cinema, finger guns. Uh, nobody can do that, make it seem cool. You guys rock, 
I will see you soon. But for me right now, it's time for tea. I will see you soon.